The year was 1896, and a little boy named Michael was born. Michael was an excellent student and loved to read stories of the lives of the saints. He went to military school, law school, and later got a degree in theology and became a theology teacher. Much like his great-great-great-uncle, St. John of Tobolsk, Michael decided to become a monk and later became a priest. After becoming a monk, Michael's name was changed to John, which is why he is now known as St. John. In 1934, a lady met St. John on a streetcar in Serbia. He told her that he was in town by mistake. He accidentally got a letter addressed to another monk who was going to be made a bishop. When the lady saw him the next day, St. John told her the situation was worse than he had expected. He was the monk that they wanted to make a bishop. St. John protested that he couldn't possibly become a bishop because he had a speech impediment and couldn't speak clearly. But the bishops told him that the prophet Moses had the same problem and that St. John would be just fine. With that, they made St. John the bishop of Shanghai. Because the communists had taken over Russia, many Orthodox Christians were forced to flee to China. St. John was grieved by the poverty of Shanghai. He rescued many abandoned Chinese babies who were thrown into dumpsters and left on the streets. He gathered sick and starving orphans and started an orphanage. The orphanage began with eight children, but quickly grew and became the home of hundreds of orphans. Sometimes food was scarce, and once during World War II, they ran out of food. When St. John was informed that there was no food left to feed the children, he spent the whole night praying. The next morning, a man brought a large sum of money as a gift for the orphanage. So the children were able to eat. St. John would pray all night long. He never slept in a bed and would always doze off in a chair. He would also walk around the cold streets of Shanghai barefoot. When Shanghai was occupied by Japanese troops during World War II, it was extremely dangerous to walk on the streets at night. But paying no attention to the danger, St. John continued to visit the sick and needy. Once, during a battle in the middle of the night, St. John wanted to go to a church that lay just beyond the battlefield. The Japanese stopped him and warned him that he was heading off to certain death. Undisturbed, St. John went down quietly in the middle of the gunfire. The shooting ceased miraculously just as he crossed the street, but then started again after he passed. When he returned, the Japanese patrol was shocked by what had just happened and said that God really had accompanied him on the way there and back. St. John had a voice teacher and her name was Anna. She helped him with a speech impediment. Now Anna was very poor. After each lesson, St. John would always give her $20. During World War II, she was badly wounded and had to go to the hospital. One stormy night, Anna felt that she was going to die and asked if St. John could come to give her communion. But the nurses wouldn't call him because the hospital had to be locked up and they weren't supposed to unlock the hospital doors. This distressed Anna, who continually kept calling out for St. John. Suddenly, in the middle of the night, St. John came. After he smiled, prayed, and gave her communion, she started to calm down and fell asleep. The next morning, she felt cured. But no one believed that St. John had come. No one told him that Anna wanted to see him. And besides, how could he get in? All of the hospital doors were locked. But Anna's hospital roommate also said that she had seen St. John. And when Anna's hospital bed was fixed, they discovered a $20 bill under Anna's pillow. St. John had left it there during his visit on that stormy night. After the war, the communists took over China, and once again, the Russians were forced to flee. St. John evacuated the whole orphanage and joined the Russian refugees in the Philippines. About 5,000 Russian refugees had to live in a refugee camp on the island of Tubabao. Many of the refugees wanted to come to America, the land of opportunity. But there were many laws that prevented them from coming. So St. John flew all the way to Washington, D.C. He wanted to try to change the laws so the refugees would be allowed to enter the United States. So he sat on the steps of the Capitol. Now St. John started attracting a lot of attention because he wasn't dressed like most people in Washington, D.C. He wanted to be noticed, and noticed he was by a senator, no less. But the senator was against allowing the refugees in because he thought it would be bad for the country. But after traveling to the Philippines with St. John, the senator changed his mind. He saw that the Russians were peaceful and resourceful people. 
and a bill was passed that allowed the Russian refugees to enter the land of the free and the home of the brave. After his American adventure, St. John was reassigned to Western Europe. St. John's reputation for holiness quickly spread among the Orthodox Christians, and even the non-Orthodox in Europe. A Catholic priest in Paris once said to a group of young people, You want proof? You say that miracles and saints don't exist? Why, today there walks in the streets of Paris a saint, St. John the Barefoot. In 1962, St. John was reassigned once again, and this time he became the Bishop of San Francisco. He was given the responsibility of being in charge of building a big cathedral. But a lot of people didn't like St. John. Some were jealous of him, and others thought that he was just too strange and too strict. In fact, a group of people in his own cathedral took St. John to court and tried to sue him. They accused him of stealing money from the cathedral. It was a very sad time for St. John, who had spent his entire life serving others. But when the truth was revealed, he was proven innocent. On July 2, 1966, St. John fell asleep in the Lord after serving the liturgy in Seattle. His body was flown back to San Francisco and thousands of people around the world whose lives he had touched during his life were deeply saddened by the news of his death.